here is what I, here's the message that I want you to take home from this, and that is that insulin causes heart disease. Yes, insulin. And if you've read the book any way you can, it is the way this channel is funded, so please look at the link below, buy it for a friend, buy it for your doctor, and send me the email as to what happens. I've used several of these to prepare a couple of uh, videos that are coming up. I really love those stories because I'm all about educating not just my patients, but my colleagues. If it wasn't for the teachers that taught me, uh, I would probably still be skeptical or at least highly questioning that I want my patients to eat 80% fat. Um, all right, so here is the data that we're going to show you insulin causes heart disease. So here is a risk. Uh, you say, what is the the major risk of heart disease? And I can see this is not lining up correctly on my computer. Um, but we are looking for death or non-fatal MIs as the way that we predict heart disease. And we have really good data from 1998 that says, if you look at heart disease and you watch these people for 25 years as they aged, um, we can see that yes, we can predict the way they have a heart attack, but it doesn't have anything to do with cholesterol. It has everything to do with how much insulin they had. So at the beginning, we're at zero years because nobody has died. We've all entered, they, they entered the, um, they entered the, the study, um, and then we divided them into quartiles, um, or quintiles, five different uh, sets of what were their insulin levels over time, and especially at 25 years, um, how many of them had a coronary heart, uh, heart disease event, which meant either they suddenly died of a heart attack or they had um, a near heart attack, um, they had a stroke. So these are uh, coronary heart disease events. Um, and if you look, the lowest insulin was the lowest risk for heart disease. The highest insulin was the highest risk for heart disease. And again, this data isn't new. The data is from 1998. So when patients come to me and say, hey, my cholesterol is high, doc. I'm going to have a heart attack. The first thing I remind them of is we don't uh, use uh, cholesterol to predict heart attacks, we should be using insulin. And as I look at the insulin ratios uh, or the insulin tests for patients that come in, um, oh, it's not the easiest thing to test in a patient. Um, insulin is a blood level, and yes, you can get a fasting blood test. If I look at my, my star patients and I say, okay, we're going to check your insulin. This is really important for the ketogenic diet. Be sure you don't have any stress before the test. You don't eat anything 12 hours before the test. That means no coffee, no nothing. Um, we want you truly fasting. You can have a sip of water if you need it. Do not take your medicines. I don't want you to have a bowel movement before you have your, your insulin tested. I want you to be super mindful and in a peaceful place when they draw your blood because stress increases your insulin level. And so they go into the lab and they are perfectly zen and they get these beautiful insulin numbers of four or three or something. But then the patients that come in and it's eight or 10 or 15 and you say, well, tell me about that. And you're like, you know, doc, I forgot your rules. And I got up at midnight and I had a little, you know, a uh, bit of you know, whatever, tea or so. I had something to drink or, um, you know what, I wasn't feeling well that morning because I was kind of nervous about the test. And I, I did, I went to the bathroom and, oh, shoot, I had a bowel movement or, you know, something silly. Um, in, the, in the end, uh, the ability to get a perfect insulin test is because so many things vary. And when you look at the insulin, uh, 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 if you have constant monitoring of insulin, it's just a very volatile moving um, test. So there are tests out there where we can check your insulin before you eat, and then you eat, um, and then we watch your insulin and your sugar, you know, five times over the course of several hours. And the cost of that is nearly $2,500 in some places, so it's ridiculous. There is a point-of-care test that you can do yourself, but I'll be honest, my patients that are motivated enough to do that test often are not as... Um, uh, they're not the ones that need the soup. They don't need convincing. They already know that this is the right test for them, and they have plenty of other ways that they've educated their, themselves to be confident that that cholesterol going up by 100 points isn't the best predictor. So the Dr. Boss ratio is something that I use uh, to predict patients that are struggling with are they confident in uh, the health of their body on the ketogenic diet. So if you're new to the, uh, the ketogenic diet, what I really want you to hear is, 
do not panic. Do not panic. Um, the first few months of being on the ketogenic diet, just like Patty is somebody where I want them to not, uh, not focus on their blood numbers, but I want them to focus on the diet and keeping those carbohydrates low. I want them to focus on not eating at night, but instead um, ch shutting off the food, you know, seven o'clock, maybe even six o'clock if they can, um, instead of, uh, and then keeping those carbohydrates under 20. I don't want them poking their fingers and getting all this analytic data. I want them feeling better. Well, Patty's done that. She's two and a half months into this diet and she really does feel better. She's lost 20 pounds, so that gives me a hint of how her blood uh, glucose and, and ketones are doing. But there's nothing like numbers to give me even more confidence because I've never met Patty. But when I look at her cholesterol numbers as a point of education, I will tell you what I would worry about as a physician is I want to know, does is her morning sugars as good as... as uh, she said her morning sugars are 91, so that gives me a little bit, but is she making ketones with that? Uh, we've just talked a lot about supplying the body with fat, and at first when they're on the ketogenic diet, it is such a shift of how, their body, how they eat that we don't talk about um, you know, the different kinds of fat. We just say, no, we want high fat. Just whatever fat it is that tastes good to you while keeping the carbohydrates low. We want bacon. <laughs> we want processed, you know, like... Um, uh, cold meat cuts, which we want sausage. And if you're really health conscious, you're going to say, but Dr. Bosworth, that's not good fats. I'm saying, ah, don't scare people with that. Begin the diet with what tastes good to you and then stay on that. Patty has now come two and a half months into her diabetic or into her keto diet. And she wants to know my total cholesterol went from 250 to 350. Should I be scared? That's when I want to incre increase her courage, hopefully a little bit, to be able to poke her finger and check not just her morning blood sugars, but her ketones. What's happening with this is we are estimating her insulin. So instead of her insulin going into my lab and getting a very volatile number, when you take the glucose and the ketones together, you're estimating the average insulin, which is actually a better way to look at her insulin than measuring the actual insulin. So let's look at that. So here's Patty, or here's some examples. Uh, this glucose was 140. Uh, again, Patty's from America, so that's the units that we use. Her ketones were 0.7. If, if you divide those out, that would give her a Dr. Boz ratio of 200. I would say that that insulin is quite high. The Dr. Boz ratio is of, of above 100 is high. That would be an insulin that's high. So if you say, well, what if she got her sugars down to 120? And she increased those ketones just a minor amount to 0.8. That brings her Dr. Boz ratio down to 150. Now that's better, that's lower insulin, but it is not a low insulin state. That would put her 350 cholesterol into a higher risk category than a 350 cholesterol where her Dr. Boz ratio is less than 100. So now let's take uh, a blood sugar of 80. That's a really good blood sugar. Uh, her ketones of 1. Again, that's not an uncommon finding, and that puts her Dr. Boz ratio less than 100. Once you get down under 100, you really can be confident that the inflammation is improving, that the insulin is lower in your system. So by looking at the glucose and the ketones together, now she can say, okay, I'm there. I'm going to keep going on this ketogenic diet, and I'm going to keep looking at my cholesterol. Uh, the last one is a number that I would find from somebody who's probably doing intermittent fasting, uh, which is a glucose of 68 and ketones of 1.7. That puts the Dr. Boz ratio of 40. And if you can get down to less than 40, that's one of my goals that I have every week. Mind you, I did not do it while on vacation, but to, to fast long enough to get my sugars uh, low enough and my ketones high enough that my Dr. Boz ratio hits 40. Why do I do that? Because I was like, Many of my patients for many years had inflammation and a few extra pounds on there where I do need to induce some autophagy to repair the system to improve my health from the probably decade of not following uh, such a, 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 a processed chemistry. Uh, and I, what I mean by that is the autophagy that I'm trying to ignite 
is much more likely if I can get that Dr. Bob's ratio less than 40. So again, the final number on this is a 20. And if you've read the book any way you can, you'll know that that's what I was trying to get Grandma Rose to. We use the ketogenic diet in Grandma Rose to help her fight cancer. She just turned 75 this past uh, three weeks, and she is off of chemo. She has normal blood counts. Uh, she looks and feels amazing. And praise God, because now she's got to take care of Dad. But having said that, she is in the most vibrant health she's been in in 40 years. I can't tell you what an awakening it's done to my 71, now 75-year-old mother. And if you want to read more about that, you can't leave the book without being inspired. It is the lessons I wrote for my mom. That thanks to my husband, who kept telling me to push publish despite my fear of not being a good writer, uh, he definitely is gets credit. As the helicopter goes over, I'm going to go to one more slide uh, and just point out that the insulin levels on this slide, as the Dr. Boz ratio goes down, uh, it is the insulin we're trying to predict. And that is how you can predict heart disease, is high insulin predicts the highest heart disease. My diabetics, when I put them on insulin, I know I am assigning them a younger death. It is dangerous to have high sugars. Uh, it's still dangerous to have high insulin. So as you look at um, how to do that, the, the ketones and glucose numbers can be de best done. I like the Foracare, and you can see that in the notes below. Uh, it is a um, meter that you have one meter but you have two different sticks that you put into the meter. I find it's incredibly uh, accurate when I compare it to my blood tests, but I also know that the strips don't aren't as fickle. They can get a little hotter or colder, and I'm from South Dakota where there's 110 degree heat. It's nicer in Hawaii than it is in my hometown of South Dakota this week. Uh, so when the strips get cold in the wintertime or hot in the summertime, we would patients would be really upset because they would have to pay for a whole new set. But I've really found that Foracare has a, st a much more stable strip, and the strips can get expensive. So if you put in uh, Dr. Boz when you're checking out, you can get a little discount. Um, apparently, I've been a, quite a promoter for their <laughs> their um, their meter. But I like that meter. There are other ones out there that work just well, but that's the one my patients have liked and I liked. Just to review, if you get that Dr. Boz ratio under 80, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.